Oh yeah. Oh man. Looky there, Brooks. Look over there. Where? Look what Uncle Uncle Keith told us when we were gone. Something happened. There it is. Looky there. We've been gone the past couple of days. My Uncle Keith, which is Kevin's brother, whenever we're gone, they help take care of the Ponderos. Just in a meeting, while Uncle Keith sent me a message, a very unexpected picture. Sounds bad today. Look at the difference in the size of the ice. Hey, Jackie. They'll be frozen. Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. I'm Dusty. The girls are inside the truck. They're with me today. In case you missed the last couple of videos, we've been struggling with the winter blast that's hit Southern Oklahoma. Unusual cold temperatures, ponds frozen, water's frozen, water lines busted, you name it. We've been out here, been busting water tanks and the ponds twice a day, just so our animals have plenty of water. But we're lucky because we raised the American bison and they have no problems handling the weather. Bison ranching continues. What do you got over there to your right? Who's that? Who's that over there? Um, Bullet. It's Bullet, the new addition to the family, isn't it? Who are we going to see? We're going to see... Who's out here in this pasture? Um, Big Joe. That's right, Big Joe. We're gonna go see Big Joe real quick. And all the ladies. And Hoss, don't forget about Hoss. Jackie's running with us. Dad, he just fell. What's he doing? He's gonna get into your room. Food. Mom's trying to get back uh, the jumper. 54. Calves are still nursing. Probably needs to be pulled off pretty soon. Mom's gonna get them lined up here for us. We gotta pull through here quick so mom can shut the gate. <laughs> She's always watching for Big Joe. She's trying to hurry before Big Joe gets over there. It's always a struggle to get back to the seat. Well, Hoss was coming around that side, so I couldn't go around the other way. We need one of those automatic gate things is what we need. Mommy, it It'll be much easier for us. <laughs> Looks like the pond oh is still- Oh my God, Joe. Is he over there? Yes. We, uh, it looks like the ponds are still frozen. To go over there. Oh, we will. Where's that it at? Oh yeah. Oh man. Looky there, Brooks. Look over there. Where? Look what Uncle Uncle Keith told us when we were gone. Something happened. There it is. Looky there. Let's give him some cubes. Still the old-fashioned way. Right out of the side. The door open. It's a little colder this way, but it still works. Stop it. No, okay. I can't. We're down here in the Big Joe pasture at the Ponderosa. Got something exciting and fun as you can see right back here. So we've been gone past couple of days. I took mom and Kevin and Marissa and we met our some good friends and stuff at the National Bison Association in Denver, Colorado. We go to this every year 
and it's time to get away, learn new things. I'll get together with some friends, a big bison family, basically. Well, my Uncle Keith, which is Kevin's brother, who helps us take care of stuff, he lives really close to us, him and my Aunt Janie. Whenever we're gone, they help take care of the Ponderosa. Well, Uncle Keith sent me a message. I was in a meeting. It was a message or a picture, really, a very unexpected picture. But right out here, way out there, is a new calf. We have a new red dog at the Ponderosa. And so me and Brooks and Marissa are out here seeing it for the first time. Keith actually discovered this. So we're very thankful for Keith. He was just coming out, getting cubes out to the Big Joe herd checking everything at the Ponderosa. Eli has also been taking care of the animals while we were gone. Cora, chickens, Jackie, but Keith was taking care of the herd. So exciting. I knew Quapaw was pregnant and I knew that she was getting pretty big and she was going to be kind of late in the season, but I guess you could call it early the season. So <laughs> this is the first baby red dog bison red dog of 2024 born here at the ponderosa in january and that's the first time for us so i don't know if you call it super late or super early one way or the other but these bison typically have babies starting in april and may really may here in june so pretty exciting for that to uh, happen and uh perfectly healthy everything all by itself uh quapaw is the mama 6008 we've had her she's one of the first bred heifers that we bought back in 2019 i believe and uh, she's an awesome mom has really good genetics comes from the quapaw tribe up in northeastern oklahoma we have a total of three of those here at this herd and uh, they're awesome animals so you guys get back mm -hmm. got too close uh, we're gonna pull up a little bit closer and uh, give them some cubes and get them taken care of with the family let's go see what it is first we need to see what gender it is. Oh, is Haas coming in hot? No, Big Joe. Oh, Big Joe is. He does. He's got the zoomies. Yeah, he's running. Oh, he's excited to get back to their she. I'm pretty sure it's a sheep, but we're going to go make sure. I wonder why she walked over there. Uh, things were getting a little too scary for I guess. Who's in front of us? Uh, who do you think? Peaches. Peaches it is. Mama. Look at him running. Look at her running, Brooks. Look at her. <gasps> Just a couple of days old and up and at him. It's amazing. Look, are you coming, Mom? What are you doing? You coming? Oh, definitely a heifer. Looky there. You see that? Oh, see the good. way she's peeing? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it is. Her mama's pretty. Yeah, she's a little sucked in. I'm not sure why. Probably just from having a calf and it's in the middle of winter. So it's probably not hard. Or it is very hard on these mamas sometimes. And then the temperatures are rough, so... We'll have to keep an eye on her and make sure she has enough to take care of the calf. Her legs are long. She's got long yeah, legs. she does have long legs. Mama's about a thousand, eleven hundred pound mama too. So, still kind of keeping her distance a little bit. Meanwhile, Big Joe's eating. Look at this guy. How's it going in the pasture? Going good? Huh? Mr. Haas. You guys getting along together? Big Joe. He's tall. Who? <clears throat> Is that snow or is that hay? That's probably hay. Her, she would have what she got on with her butt? Big Joe, right? That would be a Big Joe baby. That's a big, well. No. Now here's what happened is, <clears throat> I'm not sure. We need to go back and look at when they came over because um, that could be 
all these others are in the way. That could be a Dunbar baby, actually, because she was with Dunbar when we brought him over this <clears throat> the summer of 23, uh, May of 23, when they all Three. started to come over. You know it? Yeah, this is her, what? No, Dunbar would have been with... This is her third baby. Her third. Mom, who died? Who are, the, who are the Who are the other two that were late last year? It was Quapaw? Oh, it was all the Quapaws. And um, I hey, forgot who gosh. else. Dad. What, babe? I just wanted to go to the slippery place. The slippery place? <laughs> you mean that pond down there that's frozen? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Well, we will. We'll go look at it a second. Big Joe, he's over here eating hay. There's Peaches, Kit, the crew. There's chunks everywhere all over this pond. My Uncle Keith, who, who discovered the new heifer, also brought his John Deere tractor down here and busted up a bunch of this because it was actually colder here in Oklahoma than it was when we were in Denver. I'm going to break some of this up a little bit with the shovel. The temperatures have come up some, but we're still, we're still a little frozen. So it's a good thing that Keith came down here and broke up some of this stuff. It was actually down into the lower teens when we were gone. And uh, while we were in Denver, it was actually just a little bit colder here. Like I explained that difference in temperature, but uh, they're all bison are coming down here. And Brooks wants to skate again. We, we brought Brooks out here when it was super, super cold. And we got on the edges and we uh, did a little ice skating together for the first time. It was uh, it was fun. So now she's begging mom to come back down here. Watch it, Dusty. She's right behind you, hon. See, she stepped, and there you go. Punched through it, and now drinking out of it. <laughs> That's funny. I see when I'm stepping on it. It's cracking. Yeah, see, there I go. 180 pounds. So, it's definitely a... I'd rather it be clean water for them, so if I can, yeah, we're definitely not as frozen. So many of the people are in the north, they're like, golly, I wish it was that thin. You guys are ice fishing on yours. Never done that before. Makes me kind of nervous, but we'll bust some more of this up for them as they start coming over the hill. Breaking through. Look at him. These animals. Look at her. A little murky. Of course, this is a shallow part of the pond here. And uh, so when she's stepping in there and breaking that ice, she's stepping into the, the mud and the silt. So um, looks a little chocolate milky right now. But there's what she busted. That's how they do it. Good job, girl. So what a blessing it is. As you can see, here's one of the differences of um, basically having bison versus cattle in the winter times. Well, we're typically not having red dogs this time of the year. This is one of the benefits of raising bison versus cattle. I have nothing against cattle, nothing whatsoever. I still believe and beef i still eat beef but this is a benefit is a lot of a lot of cattle are calving right now this time of the year and so when you're dealing with these temperatures and everything uh when it gets this cold in oklahoma there's a lot of guys out there having to rescue calves 
bring them up in their barns with the mama or take the calves into their homes, which is all part of it. Um, but with bison, as you can tell, even in some of the coldest temperatures in Oklahoma, um, we just had a red dog born and nobody was around or anything. This is how it should go. They should have these red dogs all on their own with, with no issues and nobody has to go out there, rescue a, a calf and bring it in and make sure it's warm and heated up. You know, it is a blessing to raise these awesome and tough animals to survive in, you know, just these temperatures in Oklahoma. And I know up north uh, in the colder places like Wyoming, Montana and Canada, uh, North and South Dakota, where those temperatures are a lot worse. You know, bison are meant to survive those and we don't have to go out and rescue those calves and bring them in. So that is a major benefit of raising bison um, versus cattle. And um, like I said, nothing against cattle, but you know, some people have got friends that are converting from cattle ranchers to bison. And so uh, this is one of those things. A uh, major benefit of it. And so uh, when we we're trying to talk uh, to people about raising animals and stuff, this is uh, this is one of the uh, challenges you don't have to face versus bison. There's other challenges, uh, but anyways, we're busting us and moving on to more projects. Hey, what are you doing on the pond? What are you doing, Maya? <laughs> What's up? Come here. It is super, super solid over here about four or five inches thick isn't it we're just walking on the edges here look at mom and Maya over here here hold on to me mom and Maya are walking along the edge it is super thick so I know I just broke some ice right over here along the edges it's super shallow but in this part whoa hold on to me in this part of the pond it is right here it is super solid super thick oh my i just slipped you can see the depth of it. it's like it's about five or so inches here no there's no cracking nothing it is solid solid hold my hand babe brooks wanted to come out maya's having fun oh yeah look at this trees frozen maya can't get her sticks get your stick Get your stick. Oh, that was too big, Maya. Get your stick. Okay, okay. Well, I threw a stick out there last time for you, and you didn't go get it. Let's see if she'll go get it this time. Can we throw it out there? Just a little bit. See if she'll go get it. Oh. oh. She's like, yep. Not too far, of course. You can see the different layers of the ice. <laughs> Safe. Yeah, look at her. She's smart. She's walking back on the bank. Here, stay with me. We can't walk out. We're not going to walk out there too far, but you can definitely see way down in there. Daddy, I want to walk right there. No, we can't walk out there. It's too dangerous. If we fall in, it's going to be really, really cold. Really cold. Look at the pecan husk. Pecan. Look at these pecans frozen. It wasn't too bad. It's because they melted some. They're sitting out here and they melted. Daddy. Yep. Come on. Okay. 